Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique, and today we're checking out Sound Particles' new VST called Brightness Panner. This is a really unique plugin that takes pitch, brightness, or MIDI information incoming into the plugin and pans audio in really cool and unique ways. I've never seen anything like this before, but trust me when I say it's really awesome, especially if you're working with pads and you're looking for atmospheres. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through the plugin and its parameters, and then I'm gonna show you how I might set up some automation and brightness panner to add character and movement to a nice pad. So first of all, I've got some piano on the channel here. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. But if I engage brightness panner here and have it on 100% wet, watch what happens as I play this scale. You'll see that I went from center to the right. Now this has to do with right here. You can see I've got left, right, front, and back. And if I take this point, I can actually move it over and then I can start all the way on the left and then move over to the right. And I do apologize for my crappy playing here. I'm playing on my keyboard on my laptop here, but I think you get the point. I can also change my starting point from a given point to the original input channel's position. And then if I move this, you'll see that I actually now have um, sort of my uh, center position. And as I play, you'll actually see that I get panning from the left and the right into the center. And it will move a little bit towards me and then away from me. Now, that might not make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but Sound Particles, if you didn't know, and you should watch my video on their actual application called Sound Particles, uses this really cool technology to emit sound from a particle inside of a virtual space. And they've taken that technology and applied it here to just this panning information. So it's actually really, really cool. And I do want to point out that I'm using stereo, but you do have many other options, including binaural and up to 7.0. 1.2 uh, surround. So it's not just left and right, but you are getting front and back information and it's doing a lot more than just changing the value of the input gain or the output gain there. It's doing a lot more than just that. It's safe to say it sounds amazing. We can also control how things move. So right now, I'm moving from the stereo field into the center. I can turn it on clockwise counterclockwise. And I also have the filter or the cutoffs for what's going to get panned. So right now, C4 to C5 will actually introduce panning and it will actually pan 100% from the beginning to the end points over that octave. Everything below C4, for example, C3, won't get panned at all. And this is actually really helpful when we get into d using the brightness panner with a more lush pad because we don't really want the really ultra low frequencies to be panned. We want those to be nice and centered. And, uh, you know, just for mixing purposes, it's really great to have that. Another thing is if I do open this up and then I go into my C4 to C5 octave, you can see that the movement between notes is actually much smaller, and that's because we have a long, uh, larger range to do over 100%. We can instantly reverse the direction. If I hit this, you'll see that it went from counterclockwise to clockwise. And if I come up here and then hit reverse, it will actually do the same thing. We'll change it to single point and it will move the movement to the input channel's position. Now, it doesn't stop there. We also have sliding, which I actually have been having more fun with. Uh, you get some really interesting results. The differences between these are subtle, but it's essentially how the endpoints uh, move and change. You can see here that it's not like re-triggering like on the pan. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing, but these are gonna to continue to move, and when there's no input signal, they'll slowly come to a halt, and then when you trigger again, they'll move and stop. But on panning, they're gonna be in the same position, and it's gonna depend on what note you press is where they're gonna be panned to. So it's a little bit different, and I've been really liking the movement 
output from sliding uh, a little bit more than the pitch one, but obviously uh, each project is gonna be a little bit different. Now, sliding also is a little bit different that it doesn't have a maximum frequency cutoff. So here we just choose the lowest note and everything above that note will trigger the brightness panner. All right, now uh, there is a cool randomizer here, which will really randomize everything and give you pretty decent output every time. We do have drive wet and master output values as well. And when we're on the brightness mode, we have a speed too. So if I really crank this up, So again, if we're looking for movement with pads, we might go a little bit slower just to add that extra bit of character. But if you're really looking to get something really out in front and let people know that you're doing some uh, intense panning, then you can really boost up that speed there as well. You can trigger the panner by MIDI input. I'm gonna leave that for a different video. The routing is pretty straightforward in Ableton Live 10 and above. That's for a different video, but that is an option here. What I wanna do now is actually put it on brightness, which is actually when I hit that randomizer or change to. And what brightness is, instead of pitch, which is the note on the piano, brightness is how full or what frequency the sound is at when it comes in. So what we can do here, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Let's just go ahead and drop an auto filter onto the channel. And you wanna put it before the brightness panner. Actually, when I was trying out this plugin a couple of days ago, I had it after the brightness panner and the signal chain, and I was messing with the filter frequency, and I was like, why isn't anything happening? It should be, uh, and it was a, a big mistake on my part. Probably a, a beginner's mistake, and something like that would never happen to you, but just in case, make sure you have it before the brightness panner. So now if I come in, let me go ahead and minimize this so we can see both of these. And this is resizable, by the way, if I wanna come in and make it a little bit smaller so I can see that. But I think we'll be all right if I just move the frequency over here. So now I have the input frequency. So if it's below there, we're actually not gonna get any, any sound panning. But above there, things are gonna get panned. So what I'm gonna do is actually bring in Hive here and put on a nice pad instead of the piano, just so we can really work on a sort of a real world example here. I'm gonna come into the presets, come into pads. All right, so this Boogeyman preset is really, really cool. And obviously, um, we can really tweak out the movement here. We can move all of these things around. Uh, we change that speed. And the randomization here has actually changed this to binaural. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to stereo. Let's do something like this, something pretty cool and interesting. I mean, that just automatically makes the movement uh, a bit more interesting or a lot more interesting rather. And it really sells the effect of having sort of that boogeyman preset. But what we can do is actually automate the frequency here over time, something like this, and get some really interesting results this way as well. So you can see here, I'm not, I'm still above the threshold, but I'm, if I pull this up,
And the cool thing about this, or the really interesting thing about this, is as you move up in frequency that's being input into the brightness panner, the actual left and right nodes here will start to go faster. So if it's just hitting right here, they'll actually move quite slowly. And as we get more open and there's more upper frequency introduced to the sound, they'll actually move much faster. And that can really add, again, more dynamics to your sound. It's really, really cool. We can also boost up the wet just to have it at 100% so we can really hear the effects taking place. So while that is already an interesting patch using the brightness panner here very quickly and easily, really just moving some stuff around and changing a couple of the parameters adds you know 10 times more character to the patch um, right out of the gate. So it is a really, really interesting plugin. There's a lot more you can do with it, but I'm just sort of giving you the general overview here just to help you get started using brightness panner from Sound Particles. Highly suggest you check it out. It's available already on pluginboutique.com. Click the link in the video description for full details. And as always, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.